Welcome to Rocks Talks, the podcast that helps network marketers grow their business on social media. I'm Roxanne, and it's the last edition for 2020. And no, we're not going to look back on 2020. Well, not officially, at least. We're going to look forward to 2021. This is the final in the series of getting you ready to roll and rock 2021. And there's so much good in here. I can't wait for you to see and dive in. We'll be right back. You've heard me ask you this question before. I'm going to ask you again. What's your superpower? Think fast. Did you have an answer? Are you still not sure? Now, your superpower goes right along with you really being able to identify and connect with people on social media to grow your network marketing business. So if you don't know your superpower, then Houston, we have a problem. But guess what? I have a solution for you. I want to invite you to join me for the brand new um, superpower challenge. Yes, it's called the superpower challenge. And it's going to be a challenge that's going to help you get really clear on what your superpower is and who you are so that you can in 2021 and beyond to 2021 and beyond um, properly and really effectively get to, to know your target market, speak to them, have them connect with you, that know, like, and trust factor, which of course, you know, is all important to leading to eventually your volume growing through business and, and um, through sales. So anyhow, if you would like to join this free, by the way, challenge to kick off 2021, I encourage you to head over to socialstoriesmembership.com forward slash superpower. We'll see you there. So all month, we've been talking about the year that is 2021, not because I wanted to wish away 2020, but because you always, as a business person, need to be thinking forward, looking forward, um, enjoying your time now, but looking forward and getting ready and being prepared. You got to be a step ahead. Okay. And you and I both know that oftentimes you hear what you learn from corporate or from your upline or whomever is leading you is really in the, in the moment, which, okay, that's, that's, that's the bag. But I want you to become the CEO of your business, which means that you are getting clear on and having some type of plan. You know, I was doing a Facebook live as I do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday um, at 9.30, by the way, PC, PT, um, last week. And I asked the question, I asked, what are your goals for 2021? But then I went further and said, what's your plan to get there? And I'm going to tell you, when I saw the comments, especially on Instagram, there's like deer in headlights. Like, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I think it's my plan, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. I want you to know, don't feel alone if you have that similar feeling. Like, I don't really know. Or it's nebulous. Like, I want to build a team. I want more customers. More is not a number. More is not definitive. And so today I want to give you um, just some tidbits on how to get really clear on not only what your goals are for 2021, but some things that are going to help you reach them. So if you remember, when we kicked off this series, we talked about your word. What is your word? What is your mantra for 2020? And I, I got to tell you, I loved the ones that are coming in. I want to shout out, quick shout out as we do this to um, Kristen. Kristen K, because she sent me a note, I want to share it with you about hers. And I thought it was fantastic. And now here it is. Okay. So she said, she said, okay, I finally determined my word for 2021. As I listened to your podcast, the word is steadfast. She said, I'd originally thought focused, but it just really wasn't sitting well with me. My thoughts behind my words, steadfast is this. I want to keep my eyes on Christ, steadfast in my relationship with him, steadfast on my goals, both personally and professionally, cut out the noise and hone in on what's truly essential and matters most. 2020 has taught me how unfocused and scattered I can be. So, so easily distracted. So steadfast is, and she put in all caps, the word. Kudos to you, first of all, Kristen, for, for discovering your word and for letting it marinate. One of the reasons we talked about it so early is because I wanted you guys to sit with and go, does this fit right? Does that feel right? And she's found that it didn't. She found a better one for her. If you have not picked your word, there is still time for you to pick the word for the next 365 days of the year coming up. So I want you to, and I want to encourage you, listen to that podcast if you missed it. Um, but take some time to think about what your word is. What is your word for it? What do you want to be your mantra? That reminder in great times as well as in hard times, um, because you'll see them both. That's what you, that's what life is about. So what's that word that you want to help you get through all of those things for 2021? Okay, so you're going to work on your word if you don't have yet. And I would love, just like Kristen did and so many others, send me your word. I want to know what your word is. I want to celebrate your word. I want to hear it. And I listen and read and reply back to each, each and every one of those. 
the second thing we talked about was really you coming up with a social media plan. Okay. So when you have your goal, social media, it's your marketing tool, right? It's your marketing budget of zero, but it is your marketing budget needs to literally be part of that. And part of that also is saying, what can I do in 2021 that I did not do in 2020 that I can add to my social media? And last week we talked about the trends in social media. We talked about Facebook and Instagram and trends that you have there. And I love that because maybe you're like, okay, this is the year I'm going to really do Facebook lives or I'm going to make them better. I can be better about my Facebook lives. This is the year that I'm going to lean into reels and really get into that and understand how I can use it strategically for my business. So you're looking at your, your word, you're looking at how social media can, can, what you can add, what extra layer. And now I want to talk to you specifically about what are your goals? Now you might say that's a little backwards. We're talking about social media for the last two weeks. And now you want to know my goals? Well, yes, because here's the thing. I know that regardless of what your goal is, as long as it's actually a legitimate goal for network marketing, social media is automatically going to be helping you with that. Um, and adding those different layers will absolutely help you. Now, there is something called a squirrel. I know you know what it is. You know, it's like a shiny ob object syndrome. We can get into that. And that's why I want to discuss with you and have you think about what are the layers that you could add to your social media? Or maybe it's just posting differently or more often or in a different way. What are those ahead of time? Because listen, listen, Linda, there are going to be a lot of shiny objects. Lord knows that I'm going to throw some shiny objects at you unintentionally. And I want you to be able to discern and realize that you're not ahead, you're not behind, you're exactly where you need to be. And so there may be, if if you hear of a new shiny object on Instagram, which is going to happen at least six times this next year, if you're on Facebook, rocking Facebook, you're going to say, good on you, Instagram, I'll come back to you later and vice versa. Okay. Or if you're like, gosh, I'd really love to do those lives, but you're not there yet. You're not there yet. That is okay. It will be there when you get there or something better will be there. Let's be real. Okay. So do not feel like you need to do everything because you do not need to do everything. You just need to do enough. You just need to do what you're doing really well. You're listening to this on, um, on Wednesday, the 30th. And it, if you're listening in the morning, there is actually at, at noon Pacific time, we're going to be going into the CEO of you workshop. You might already be signed up for it. I might see you there. If not, I guess there's still time. You can go to, um, you can go to my website, socialstoriesmembership.com and grab a seat. You can also get the recording. In that workshop, we are breaking down all things on making a 90-day plan for your social media and for your entire business, your business than social media. But today, so today I want to let you in on a couple little secrets. First and foremost, when you're planning this, and this is something I tell you all, listen, if it makes you nervous to think about, if someone asks you, where do you want to be this time next year? You're like, oh my gosh. If you start having heart palpitations, if you have to grab a paper bag and breathe into it, then you are not a 365 day planner type of person. That is totally okay. 90 days goes a long, long way. And that is why we're doing a 90 day plan because really 90 days gives you that focus and it also helps you retool. If I said that my goal for 2021 is to be the queen of Zamunda and that's my goal and I get into it and lo and behold, I'm like, six months in and I, or 90 days in, and I haven't even met the Prince of Zamunda, it's going to be kind of hard. So it allows me to retool why we do 90 days. It allows you to get really good on what you're doing, but it also lets you to, allows you to retool whatever that goal is for the year. So you can say, okay, I've got made this much progress. What's a realistic 90 day goal from here to go again and again. There's a reason that quarters is a thing in business. Why isn't it quarter? Why isn't it a thing in your business? I say it should be. Okay. 90 days, three months. You can do anything for three months. You can focus on, in on anything for three months. And here's the thing. You might focus on one thing to help you get to your goal in the first 90 days, and then a completely different thing for the next 90 days. And that is totally fine. So my question to you, if you got those heart, heart palpitations is what do you, where do you want to be April 1st? Where do you want to be on April fools? And I'm not fooling. I'm serious. Okay. I want you to really hone in on that. Okay. And, and here's what I want you to do on your goals. All right. Uh, we're Listen, and, and, and PS, and by the way, what we're doing in the session is way deeper than this, but this is important. I want to get you, some, get you in a good place. When you think about your goals for 2021, all right, your 90 day goals, plans, whatever you want to call them, Stan, I want you to, to, to do something we haven't done in a while. And that's 
put something in there for you, not your business. Yes, that helps, that excites you and all those things. But what's something you can do personally to make yourself better? I'll tell you, I was thinking about this yesterday and today, and I was like, this is it. Um, I was like, I need to get back to reading or listening to books again. I go in waves. I used to be an avid reader. Like I was a reader, like you couldn't stop. Like you want to get me a gift when I was growing up, give me a book. Going to Barnes and Noble, I can still remember the Barnes and Noble, not the Barnes and Noble, B. Dalton. B. Dalton was the bookstore that was near us. And then yes, we had Barnes and Noble as well too. But I remember going to B. Dalton because it was so close. And I remember get, reading all those, like it was just a joy when we get to go there. I get to pick out a couple of books. I couldn't wait till we went again and all the things. And then I went to law school and it was like tons of reading. And I think that at that point, after I was done with law and I'm done with appellate law, which is more reading, I was like, you know, I'm kind of over you reading. Uh, but I then was reading books or listening to books and loved it. But I realized that I haven't been doing that lately. So something that I am starting actually now, not even waiting till 2021, is getting the book thing back and going. Now, I will tell you, I'm doing Audible because I want to listen to it and because I can listen to it while I'm creating or whatever I'm doing. And so that is what I'm doing. And I, I'll tell you, the first book I'm reading, which... P.S. And by the way, I skipped one of her books on accident, but I'm a big fan. I love You Are a Badass. I loved You Are a Badass and Money Making. I skipped on accident You Are a Badass every day, although I see it's like only an hour long. So I may get that. But she, Jensen Cheryl, that's who I'm talking about, came out with a brand new book um, this month, I think, or end of last month called You Are a Badass at Something Habits. It's a, it's a book about habits and badass. And it was between that and Atomic ha Habits. And I thought, well, you know what? You love Jen Sincero, so let's go with that one. So I am going to start it. It's like in my card. I'm going to start that book. And I'm excited about just getting back into that. And my goal, and y'all, this, you might go, Roxanne, that's it. Yeah, this is my goal. My goal and part of my 90-day plan is to listen to one new book a month, Surely I can do that. Like they're like five hours, six hours, maybe. So, um, but I actually want to listen to one new one and then re-listen to some old ones that, that were just good. Like I literally want to listen to all of the month of January will be my best month. <laughs> okay. It's made it. It's going to be a badass month because I'm going to listen to, uh, I'll listen to um, the, the new one and then the two older ones that I've also already listened to. Um, right. I have, you know, I have the pay, the actual hardback book signed by Jensen Shara, by the way, but I also, I like to listen to it and hear a voice. So I'm going to do that. And I'll probably even get that one that people say you can skip. So I'm very excited about that. But I want to ask you, what are you doing for self-development? What are you doing that's personally for yourself? And maybe for you, it's like, I'm going to take a break and have a cup of my favorite drink and relax in the bathtub. Awesome. How many times are you going to do that in the next three months? I'm asking you because I want to know. So yes, we're diving into, and if you're at the workshop, we're diving into your goals for your business and we're diving into how social media is going to help you to get there. But another piece of the pie really is what are you going to do for yourself? You do so much for everyone else. I know you do because you're in this business. And if you're a mom, I know you're doing a lot for your kids and you're doing a lot for hubs. Um, and you're doing a lot for wifey. So if you're dad, so I know, um, I know, or if you're not a dad, if you're a mom, you might be doing a lot for wifey too. I know you're working it. Are you taking care of yourself? So I want you to take care of yourself and actually carve out some time to do that. You know what I know? I know that when I'm reading books avidly or listening to books, the, the, the ideas flow. And I know that it allows me to kind of remove myself from this space and go to another space for a little while and think about and hear those things. Why can't you have that too? You can. So my suggestion, my suggestion, my recommendation, my challenge to you is to find something that you can do for yourself, but I want you to make it a goal and I want you to make it a priority. See, because if we say, oh, one day I'm going to, I'm going to take a bath every week. One day, one day is here. If you haven't learned anything from 2020, we've learned that it's all here. It's here. So let's do it. What can you do? And then pencil out and carve out that time to do it, which leads me to planning because I love a good planner, y'all. Um, do you have a planner? Are you a paper, are you a paper planner person? Are you a, a, are you an electronic planner person? I'm actually both. I, you have to be like in my business, right? But I, I've got the Google calendar that Scott and I use 
That way I know what he's doing. He knows what I'm doing. Um, but of course that's hooked up to my, um, my appointment calendars for my clients and all the things. And then I've got social stories as a calendar. That's all automatic. That's all automated. But for me and my brain, I am hundred percent a paper calendar girl. I love me a paper calendar. And right now loving the top planner. So if you don't have the top planner or planner, if you don't have a planner yet for 2021, you know, I'm going to recommend this. I love this Megan Summerall's, um, Megan, here it is. Megan Summerall's top planner is a great one to have. Um, but you need to get some type of thing where you can write to me. There's, there's still value in writing it down right? So if you don't have a planner, that's going to help you write the things down. And if that's not your bag, that's fine. But if it is your bag, it's time. And it's exciting because it's like you get to get a new planner. It's something for you. And it's going to keep you on track, not only with your business, but with your life in general. Okay. So things I want you to think about. If you don't have a word, it's time to pick your word. Once you have that word picked out, I want you to write it in several places, including your paper planner. Maybe you put a little reminder on your calendar that pops up with your word. Yeah, I do reminders. I have a reminder that goes off twice a day, reminding me about words and things that I, that I want to keep top of mind. Maybe you put it on your win window, your mirror, wherever, maybe figure your goal. Social media wise, what is a layer that you want to master and you want to get, you want to dive into? Even if you dive in and it's cold, you got to try it. What is that thing? And then you will ask yourself how you can hone, hone in and work on part, part, part of it or all of it in, in the 90 days. And don't forget the trends we talked about. How is that going to play into what, what thing you want to focus on, right? Uh, for example, so that's, and that's why we did the trends. Because if you're like, I'm going to do TikTok, which I got so many responses from you guys after. <laughs> I did saying, hallelujah, now I don't do TikTok. Thank you, Roxanne. I don't have to do TikTok. I was like, well, I didn't say you don't have to. I'm just saying that you're not welcome to talk about your business there. But alas, knowing what we know about where social media is right now, what's that thing you want to add to your plate? What's that thing you want to master? And I love that I've gotten a lot of messages saying, I'm working on reels. I'm going to do reels this year or next year. I'm rocking it. Okay. So what is that thing? And then last but not least, when you, you want to make sure you got those goals down, right? But I want you to think about what's something for you something that maybe not be attached directly to your business or to your kids or your family, but what's something you can do? What's something you can do for you? And that is equally, if not more important than all those other things you're doing. It is, it is indeed. Now, um, before I go, I'm going to ask you one other question. It's leading somewhere, so I'm going to warn you. What is your superpower? I have asked you this so many times that I want you to get to a point where you just like, oh, my superpower is such and such. But I know that's not realistic. Some of you might be still struggling with it. Some of the most powerful messages I've gotten are from people like you who reach out to me and say, I realize I'd never thought I had a superpower, Roxanne, but I actually do. And you know, it, it, it makes me cry. Like my hairs are standing up thinking about it. But also, I want you all to believe you have a superpower. And that is why, because you do, because you do. And we need your superpower. I'm being selfish now. As part of this, this, this world, you have a superpower to help me. You do, and everybody else. As I have a superpower, and we all have a superpower to help each other. And so it's time for you to stop playing small. It's time for you to get your shirt open and be that superwoman, wonder woman you are. So that is why I'm so excited about this. We're doing a challenge kicking off next week. And it's all about you discovering your superpower. The challenge is, the challenge is figuring out your superpower. That is what we're going to do. A free challenge. You're all invited. Invite anyone who doesn't really know what their superpower is. Um, this is going somewhere. You're like, why do I need this? Because you need this for your social media. You know how much easier it will be for you to actually communicate with people and connect with people on, online if you just knew what your superpower was? Like seriously, seriously. It's like Eureka moment. So I encourage you all to join that. You can get registered for the superpower challenge at socialstoriesmembership.com forward slash what else? Superpower. All right. We're going to be right back with a behind the scenes and in review. So for this behind the scenes, I wanted to say, I feel like I hope I haven't ignored 2020 with you this past month. I mean, 2020 was a big feat. And if we're still standing here right now, we made it, which is remarkable. Um, 
It's funny though, because when I think back and I'm, uh, this is, we're recording this on the 22nd. So three days before Christmas and I'm doing my best to be excited about, I love Christmas. I love Christmas. It's Jesus birthday. It's awesome. But I am bummed. I'm not with my family. And I think that over the last month, I've kind of told you guys, I'm dealing with just like the 2020 caught up to me. We were running a race and I was running at sprint pace and I was rocking it. And 2020 is like, I can't catch her. I can't catch her. And then lo and behold, I don't know, maybe I stopped for queso or I stopped for kombucha and 2020 was like, gotcha. So right now I'm working through just recognizing, hey, Roxanne, it was bound to happen. It was 2020 and being okay with it and saying, hey, 2020, yeah, not today, Satan. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I literally woke up this morning just feeling malaise, like, oh, like feeling like, oh my gosh, this sucks and this sucks and this sucks, which, which if you know me, I don't wake up like that. So that, that's not entirely true. I woke up like, yay. And then I felt that. It's not like me. And I said to myself, Roxanne, you have a choice. You can choose for this to be a good day or you can choose for this to be a bad day. What day do you want it to be? I said, I Jove, I want this to be a great day. And then it's like the little gremlins hurt. Like, oh, she does. Well, let me throw this at her. And so I, I did find out um, that someone close to me was, was sick, um, but they're okay. So let me just say that, but just, and I was like, oh man. Maybe this is not going to be. And I said, no, this is still going to be a good day. I'm not going to think the worst. I'm going to think the best and let that happen. And I have to say, now that we are a little bit further through the day, um, it is good going to be a good day for the person, for everyone involved. But it doesn't negate the fact that I know that people are suffering and hurting and just trying to fight off the gremlins running after you. And so it makes this Christmas week a little bit different, doesn't it? I mean, it's odd that we're not going to church. Our church is online. Awesome. I mean, great. We still have church, but it's like, um, I'm picking out like Christmas dinner, which just feels odd. And like when I pick it up somewhere and it just, it's odd. We never have to feel like, and Scott used to say this to me when, when the pandemic started, he's like, I'm so tired of this phrase, the new normal. I'm like, well, why? And he's like, well, cause I, I don't want things. Basically he wants things to go back to normal. He does not want a new normal. He wants to go back to normal. I don't know that that's going to happen, but I do know it is okay to recognize and realize this is not a normal Christmas and this is not how I want Christmas to be. Like if, if I had my druthers, if I had my druthers, I was in that musical, name that musical. Um, and I, if I had my druthers, this Christmas would not be the Christmas that I choose to repeat over and over and over and over and over again. However, I'm resolved that while this Christmas is not normal, this Christmas will not be the new normal and I will find happiness and joy in it. And I'm thankful. And I think about the things I'm thankful for. Yes, I'll be Zooming with my family. Yes, I would love to see them and, and hug them and just hug their necks and all the things. Um, but there'll be another Christmas for that, please God. And there, and I've had Christmases like that. And I treasure those. those. So instead, and I will be chilling like villains here um, and hanging out with Baylor, who is sleeping right there, by the way, or I'd show you, but she's down there. Um, and we're going to make the best of it. And, and that's why I said, Roxanne, by Jove, you're making a, you're going to do a tree this year. Like you're going to do a tree. Although shout out to some of you. I saw some trees. My tree is like nothing compared to some of the trees y'all were doing. I'm like, thank goodness we're not competing because I would lose. <laughs> you're listening to this after Christmas, but New Year's is the same feeling, right? I want you with me. Let's do this together is to just Take a moment before the year's out and think about the things we have accomplished and think about the things that have been great because it would be rude and wrong and I'd be lying if I said that 2020 didn't have some amazing moments in it because even in a, a year that was like, wait, that happened? Wait, that happened? It was one of those hold my beer moments like, oh, I, okay. there were some great things, beauty for ashes, and we don't want to negate that. Um, one of my dear friends called me just the other day and she said, we need to take a moment and celebrate 
what we've accomplished. She said, I know we don't feel that way. This is Megan. She's like, I know we don't feel that way because we're constantly like going, 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 reaching for the next thing. And we're surrounding ourselves by those who have done even more than we have. We don't realize it's like, but we have accomplished a lot. She's like, so we need to take a moment before there is out and realize and recognize that. And I, I'll tell you another thing. Had she not called me, she picked up the phone and called me yesterday, which we're a voxing couple. Um, had she not done that today, when I woke up with all the things, just ah, it would have been a worse day. So perhaps you woke up and your day is like malaise. If you're still listening, awesome. I want you to take stock of what you've accomplished and what you've done. I did a survey with um, my social stories members uh, last month, and I can't tell you how many of them came back to me and said, thank you for having us do that survey because I didn't realize how much I'd done since last year, this past year. I hadn't realized how much I've accomplished. We don't. We remember the things we didn't do. We don't remember things we did do. We remember the bad things before we remember the good things. You know this. We all know this. I'm not telling you something that's like a eureka, like shocker, but we forget it, especially in a year like 2020. So count your blessings, at least for this moment, and treasure what you have accomplished and what you have survived because you're a survivor and you are triumphant over it. I was like, can we call you a triumpher? I don't think that's a word. You've been triumphant for it, over it. You all rock. Um, I am so thankful for you. I am so thankful for this podcast. Oh my gosh. Thank you for li- like literally, you guys come back every single week. Thank you for that. We're going to keep going and growing um, this podcast for you. You are the mission of it um, in 2021. So we aren't going anywhere. Um, you'll, and if you'll ha- as long as you'll have us, we'll have you. We'll be here for you, I should say. Thank you so much. And let us both remember that you are not ahead. I'm not ahead. You're not behind and I'm not behind. You and I are exactly where we're meant and supposed to be. Take care. Let me be the first to officially say happy new year to you. And I cannot wait to see you in 2021.